I want you to take your Bible, please, and turn to Second or First Kings, First Kings, chapter seventeen. And when you find the passage, I want you to look up here. First Kings seventeen. Now, I probably shouldn't be here today, but I wanted to explain to you what's happened about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, I came up with a bad cough. Yeah, I didn't pay much attention to it. I, went, I came then on Wednesday to prayer meeting conducted prayer meeting, I felt good. And I then went back to the house and uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon, I began to get very sick. And by evening, I couldn't put one foot in front of the other. And so we thought about calling the ambulance to take us to the hospital, but my wife was able to drive us there. And uh, they began to do a battery of all kinds of checks and balances, you know how they do. And uh, so then they came in with one of these, <laughs> one of these long straws, you know, and stuck it up my nose. and. And uh, both nostrils, you know, you hate that. And about a half hour later, the doctor came and said to me, Reverend, you've got COVID. Well, I knew I had something, but I didn't think I had COVID. And with my age at 87, and asthma, as bad as asthma as I've got, it was almost a death sentence to me. And I went home and continued to get worse. And uh, fortunately, I didn't have to go into the hospital and stay there. They sent me home and said, going to have to tough it out at home. They gave me medicine to take. My wife got a touch of it too, and she still has an exceptionally bad cough, and so I kept her home today. I met with Aaron and David a little while ago, and I decided that I'm going to take off the entire month of June just to get back my strength. Hopefully, I can get it back. I've been walking each day, a little bit each time, a little more. And so, uh, uh, with John, where did John go there? <laughs> I thought John did a good job preaching. Uh, he needs to stand behind the pulpit a little bit more because <laughs> he faded in and out. But uh, anyhow, uh, Tony Slutz is available the entire month of June if we want to. David is always able to preach. And so we're well we're well equipped with preachers, and we thank God for that. I've been in churches where nobody could else preach but me, but I'm blessed, and you are too, to know that we have three preachers that are able to come and, and preach the Word of God. And so I'm not going to come to prayer meeting. David and Lonnie can take care of prayer meeting without any trouble. I'll try and be here on Sundays. I may not do much, but I'll try to be here. So I'd appreciate your prayers. 
It's, uh, I've been sick a couple of times. Once I was sick with hepatitis, really bad. And I was in bed for two weeks at that time. Couldn't move a muscle. And then back in 1989, I had a complete nervous breakdown. Uh, the doctor said it was burnout. I was burning the candle at both ends finishing up my doctor's degree and taking care of all the services and everything at First Baptist. And it just took me down. And so the doctor sent me out of town for six weeks. So I went to Florida. Thank God for missionaries who helped me find a place to stay without any cost. So. Uh, that's where we're at, and I'd appreciate your prayers. This morning, I want to talk to you about uh, Elijah in hiding. In chapter 17, beginning in verse 1, we find Elijah in confrontation. Notice what it says. In verse 17, uh, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilgal, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Elijah said to him, Now, it's not going to rain until I give the signal. Uh, it's not going to have any dew on the ground until I say so. And he felt good about that. He, he came out of the palace, the palace of the king, the most powerful man in all of Israel. He came out of there feeling good about himself, wondering what God was going to do to them and for them and send them next. And then we see beginning in verse 2, listen to what it says. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt uh, drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan, and the ravens brought him f bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass, after a while, that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. I want to preach a message on what do you do when the brook dries up? What do you do when you run out of gas? What do you do when, when you can't put one foot in front of the other? What do you do when, when seemingly all is lost? That's where, that's where Elijah was. He, he obeyed God. He was sitting by the brook and he watched it day after day and watched it dry up. I've, I've been there. I don't know if you've ever been there. I don't know if you've ever been where, where your Bible reading is dull, your prayer life is empty, and going to church is a bore. But I've been there as a preacher. I've been in this business now for well over 60 years. I first started preaching when I was 18. 
And uh, I've been preaching ever since. And there's been times when I didn't want to do it. There was times when I felt that, that I was finished. And so let's take a look at, these, at this passage uh, as it relates to Elijah uh, coming out of the palace. Now, there are four parts to this message, and the first part is a command from God. You'll notice the command here is to Elijah. He said, go hide thyself. Now, let me tell you, folk, that was the farthest thing from Elijah's mind. Elijah was not a recluse. He was not a hermit. He was not a monk. He was an out front kind of guy. His personality was such that he was a front man. He was not a backwoods uh, laid out uh, fella down by the brook. He, he, that, that was not part of his character. His personality was altogether different than this. But that's what God told him to do. You know, sometimes, sometimes God commands don't make any sense. Uh, I think of, often I think of how God spoke to Noah and said, I want you to build an ark. <laughs> he didn't even know what an ark was. It had never rained. I mean, there wasn't any place around for a boat. He, 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 and God said, I want you to build an ark and I'll give you the specifications. And Noah said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll do that. I think of the time Moses was between a rock and a hard place. Uh, he, they, the people have, had been had been delivered from bondage. And they were uh, between the deep blue sea of the Red Sea and the chariots of Israel coming, or the chariots of Egypt. And, uh, and th they came to Moses, and Moses, uh, uh, they said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? They were panicking. And Moses said, just stand still and see. And then some, we're not told, we're not spoken, I mean, it, it's not spoken anyhow, but obviously God commanded them to do something that just didn't make any sense at all. He said, take your staff and hold it out over the water. And Moses said, yes, sir, I'll do that. And he went over and held his staff out over the water and sure enough, the waters parted and the children of Israel walked across on dry ground to the other side of the sea of Red Sea. You see, what I'm saying to you is that uh, there's a lot of times when God speaks to you and says, do this or do that, and it doesn't make any sense at all. And if you're not sensitive to the will of God, if you're not sensitive to the commands of God, you're liable to miss your next assignment. You're liable to miss what God wants you to do next. So we see, first of all, the command. And then uh, connected with the command, you'll always find this throughout the scriptures. There's always a promise connected to the command. Notice what it says. He said, uh, he said in verse 4, And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. I want you to take your pencil. If you have a pen or a pencil, I want you to uh, circle the word there. There. You see, we, 
we're, we're a little presumptuous with God. We think just because we've been saved, just because we've accepted Christ as our Savior, that God's obligated to take care of us regardless of our obedience or disobedience. But such is not the case. God said to Elijah, now I want you to go to the brook Cherith and I'll feed you there. No place else. Had he gone any place else, he would have starved to death. He would have not had anything to eat and he wouldn't have had anything to drink had he not listened to God. What I, what I understand clearly is that not only are God's commands sometimes strange, but his, his promise is always true. His promises was always true. When God makes a promise to you, you don't have to worry about whether God's going to take care of it or not. He's always going to keep his promise. And that's the case here. He, he, uh, he said, he said now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed you uh, by way of the ravens. Now, I don't know if you know anything about ravens. I've done a little research. Ravens are the most vicious, uh, territorial, carnivorous, possessive birds that God ever made. They love meat. They never met a mole they didn't like. They, I mean, I mean, uh, whenever a raven gets a piece of meat in its mouth, uh, it, it is not going to give it up. But day after day, week after week, month after month, ravens brought bread and meat to Elijah down by the brook. Isn't it interesting how fish obey God? Donkeys obey God. Birds of the air obey God. And yet mortals who have a soul and are created in his image oft times are disobedient to God. No wonder, no wonder the church is in trouble today because we've stopped listening and obeying God. But Elijah said, yes, sir, I'll do it. Because we notice the response. The response is in verse 5. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. There it is. There it is. He obeyed God. He, he said, yes, sir, I'll do it. I don't understand a word you're telling me. I don't understand how birds are going to feed me. I don't understand anything about it, but I'm going to do it because you've commanded me to do it. And I'm, I'm going to obey you. Could I remind you something? If you want to know what God wants you to do tomorrow, you better do what he wants you to do today. You see, you see, today is, is your day. Tomorrow belongs to God. And if, if God commands you to do something, you don't put it off. You don't say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my own thing. Now, I'll tell you, Aaron, I secretly, secretly I admire people who obey God immediately. I've never been one like that. Uh, my personality is that 
I always want to do my own thing. And every time I do my own thing, I get in trouble. And I have to get on my knees and my face before God and beg his forgiveness. But, but when I do what God wants me to do, uh, I'm living in pleasant places. Uh, you know, I, I thought of the song that Danielle led in this, I shall not be moved. <laughs> you know, that's, that's us, you know. <clears throat> I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm not going to be moved. Well, God has a way of moving us. Moving us in, moving us out, sometimes moving us up. And if that's the case, then, then we're, we're at least in the will of God. But I want you to notice something else now. I want you to notice verse 7. Verse 7 says, And it came to pass after a while. You see, time's always involved. It came to pass. It always comes to pass. It always comes to pass. When God says something, it's going to come to pass. And, uh, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. When I read that, I thought to myself, what a revolting development that is. I've obeyed God. I've, I've went to the brook. I've stayed with the birds. I've did what God wanted me to do. Now the brook's dried up. I don't know if you've been there, but I tell you, it's a lonely place when the brook dries up. And sooner or later, Sooner or later, it's always going to happen to you. It's going to happen when, when, you, uh, when life becomes difficult, when life becomes hard, and things are not working out for you. And by the way, by the way, there are different kinds of brooks. There's the emotional brook, there's the financial brook, there's the psychological book, brook, uh, there's, the, there's the, uh, the physical brook. Oh, any one of these brooks can dry up on you, and when they do, you better, you better know how to get a hold of God. You better get on your face before him and, and plead the blood because, because uh, if you don't, if you don't, then you're not going to know what God has for you <coughs> in the future. <coughs> you see, remember, remember, if, if you want to know what God wants you to do tomorrow, you better do what he wants you to do today. And in the process, uh, you very, very well might find your brook all dried up. And you're wondering what you're going to do. So what do you do? What do you do when the brook dries up? What do you do when, when, when it seems like you've run out of gas physically or emotionally or psychologically or financially. What do you do? Let me tell you what you don't do, first of all. You don't panic and do something dumb. We're prone to do that, you know. We panic. And then invariably we'll do something dumb that, that gives God the jitters. 
It causes all kinds of problems with us. A classic example of panicking and doing something dumb was when Abraham thought, well, it doesn't look like Sarah's going to have any babies. Doesn't look like she's going to provide a son for me. And, 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 and no doubt he, he, thought, he thought he was doing the right thing. He, he, I mean, it was to, by the consent of Sarah that, that he went in unto his handmaid and had a son by the handmaid of Sarah, called his name Ishmael. You know who the Ishmaelites are? They're all the Arabs of the world. They're the Muslims. It's the, listen, listen folk, the biggest problem we have in America or in the world today is not Russia in Ukraine. <clears throat> The biggest problem we have in the world today is the presence of the Ishmaelites who look upon every one of you and me as, as, as uh, 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 what's the word? Infidel. What is it? Infidels. infidels. Thank you, David. We're infidels deserving of death. And if they had their way in America, every one of us would be dead. That's the biggest problem. All because Abraham panicked and did something dumb. So don't do that. Instead, find out, find out why the brook went dry. Uh, now, with, 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 uh, with Elijah, it was easy to figure it out. All I got to do is go back to verse 1. See, God was simply answering his prayer. That's all. God was answering his prayer. No rain, no water. No water, no brook. No brook, no water to drink. The brook dried up. Because, because God was answering his prayer. And maybe, maybe that's one of the reasons you're going through some difficulty in your life today. Or, or, or maybe, maybe there will come a time when you really are having difficulty. You may not be having it now, but you may, you may come a, there may come a time when, when, whenever your brook dries up too. You better check out and see if maybe God is answering your prayer. Remember when you prayed, Oh, Father, make me like your son. Help me to be conformed to his image. Well, if you're going to pray like that, then you might just as well expect to have God do a work in your life that's going to take you to the woodshed, take you to the brook and watch it dry up. See? So, so num number one, uh, number one, uh, you don't panic and do something dumb. Number two, number two, you, you check out to see why your brook is drying up. And then finally, you wait on God. When I was president of the Indiana Fundamental Baptist Fellowship, I remember a pastor called me Sunday afternoon. And he said, Brother Huffan, he said, I resigned my church today. I said, you what? He said, I resigned my church today. I said, why in the world did you do that? Are you financially free? You have some, somehow, some way 
a lot of money is going to come in to support your family? Is that what the problem is? No. No, he said, I just, you know, I, I, in, in essence, he, he was saying to me, the brook dried up. I said, that was dumb. I said, now where are you going to go? I, and then I said to him, do you suppose, you suppose your congregation would take you back if you pleaded ignorance and pleaded stupidity and being dumb? He said, probably so. So I said, tonight when you go back to church, uh, ask him to take you back. And then, and then I said, hustle while you wait on God. Uh, Isaiah 40, 31, you know what it is, don't you? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on God. That's what Elijah did. And it wasn't long until God said, I, I got another job for you. Got another assignment for you. There's a lady down in Zarephath that needs your help. You see, you see, uh, if, 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 if you wait on God, and, and stay close to him. Uh, he'll never let you down. He'll, he'll take care of you. Even if it's by way of the ravens. He'll take care of you. If you'll just obey him. And listen to him. And just, just wait. And see. That's what. That's what. That's what Moses told the people. Just stand still and see. And so that's what I say to you. I say to myself, wait, stand still, see. God's not dead. God is alive and well on planet Earth and he wants to work in your life and mine. And so let's... Let's let him do it by his goodness and by his grace. Let's pray together. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we've done our best today. And I ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that you'll, you'll take these few moments that we have here with the invitation. There may be somebody, Father, who's, whose life has turned sour. Uh, their faith has uh, lost its way. There may be somebody in here, Father, who, who needs to get on their face before God and plead the blood, ask you to forgive them. And we're going we're gonna to give them an opportunity to do that in just a few moments. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All to Jesus I 